let's go over a booking and all of its parts. To find bookings, go to the top and click Bookings, then select a booking. Here we are taken to the Overview page. This shows the general info for the booking, which includes the status, which property, the party size, if there's a card on file, and if you've applied any tags to this guest. Then on the right side you see the guest balance. You'll see the total charge, the total paid, the total refunded, and the total owed. There's also a collect now button. Below that you'll see the guest listing site fees. These are any fees from channels you may have connected like Airbnb or VRBO. Next you'll see the My Net Financials. Here we have host fees, net charges, and net payments. If this was an API channel booking, your overview page would include the channel section. This shows which listing site it's from. This one is from Airbnb. It shows the reservation number, which you can click into. It shows when the API was updated. And it shows the platform email. Below all of that, you'll see the guest info. You'll see the name, the email address, any tags they have applied, and the guest address. You can easily click Edit Contact Info if you'd like to change or add anything about the guests. You can easily add a new email address, phone number, or address here. You can also click the Guest Record button. This will show you any past info about the guests, along with the conversation, the contact info, and related activity. If we go back to that same booking, we'll see below the guest info we have the check-in and check-out dates, along with the check-in and check-out times. You can also see any notes you may have entered for this guest, and all activity for this guest. If we go back to the top, we'll also see four buttons next to Overview. We have an Email This Guest button, which will let you email them. We have a Copy To, and you could say New Booking or New Quote. There's also a Move button to switch which property this is for, along with if you need to adjust the arrival and departure dates or the check-in check-out times. If we go back to the Overview page, we'll see all these green tabs at the top. If we drill into each one, we'll see info for that particular topic. If we click Info, we'll see the guest info, the party size, and the date that they booked. You can change their contact info, switch guests, and show their contact info. From here, you can also change the booking details. If we go to Charges, this is where we'll see all the line items for that booking. Here we see we have four nights of rent and the cleaning fee. You can click Change Charges to go in and edit the line items. You can delete charges, and you can add charges by clicking this button. And from this drop-down list, you can select which charge you'd like to add, let's say a pet fee, and you can change the amounts here if you'd like. You also have the option to reset to the property default rates. If we click this, then click Yes Reset Charges, we'll now see that the line items have the default property charges. You can also reset the property rates by clicking this button. If this booking was associated with a channel, this is where you would see the guest channel fees. You can also click the record fee button here. If we go to the transactions tab, this is where we'll see the total charges, the amount received, and the guest balance. We'll also see if we have any scheduled transactions, and below that you'll see any fees that are charged to you. You can also click the record fee button. Above that, you'll see a Payments, Security Hold, Refund, Schedule, and Request buttons. If we click in, we'll see you have the option to collect a payment by running the card. You can also record a payment. You can schedule a payment, and you can request a payment. Similarly, with the Security Deposit Holds, you can place a hold on the card. You can also schedule a Security Deposit Hold, and you can request a Security Deposit Hold. The same goes for Refunds, where you can send a refund and you can record a refund. You can also schedule a payment, schedule a security deposit, and you can request a payment, request a security deposit hold. You can request a new card if you have a credit card processor connected, but currently we do not, which is why this is disabled. You can also request a booking cleanup. If we go over to the Rules tab, we'll see all the rules that apply to this booking. We'll see the payment rules, the pending and auto cancellation, security deposits, travel insurance, and cancellation policy. These rules are applied based on what you have set in your property rules. But you can also click Change Rules if you'd like to change the rules for a specific booking. 
For example, if we wanted this booking to pay the second payment 60 days before arrival, we'll enter that here, then scroll down and click Save. Now we'll see the second payment is due 60 days before arrival, and if we wanted to reset this to the default property rules, we can easily click the Reset button, then click Yes Reset Rules. And now we see this has gone back to the 30 days before arrival collect automatically. If we go to the Insurance tab, we'll see any details on whether any travel insurance has been purchased for this booking. And here we're given a reminder that travel insurance can only be purchased no later than 30 days prior to arrival. The booking we are looking at is past the deadline, which is why we are seeing this. If we go to the Legal tab, this is where we'll find any signed legal agreements, and you can request an e-signature on a legal agreement by clicking here, then selecting which agreement you'd want them to sign. If you had multiple agreements you'd want them to sign, you would click here, then select your agreement, then you'll be given a link that you can copy or preview, and you can also download a PDF if you'd like. When you're ready to send the agreement to the guest, click Compose Email, then you have the option of editing the email before it goes out, but if you're fine with the way it is, you can scroll down and click Send Email. As soon as the guest signs the legal agreement, it will show up under Sign Legal Agreements for your record keeping purposes. Next we have the Files tab. Here you can upload files for this particular guest. For example, if they had emailed you their driver's license, you could come here then upload that file to keep for your records. Next we have the Reviews tab. Here you'll see any reviews from the guest and you can record a new review or request a review from the guest. Under the Notes tab, you can write any notes about this guest and you can check Guest has a problem if you'd like to make a note of that. When you've typed your notes in, you can click Save Changes and you'll find these notes on the overview page as well. Next we have Custom Fields. This is where you'll find any specific booking custom fields that you have created. Currently we have a name and age field that will be auto-populated when the guest signs the rental agreement. You can also click the change button to drill in and type in whatever you'd like, then click save. Next we have the channel tab. If this booking was managed by an API channel connection, you would see information about that here. Here's an example of an API connected channel booking. This one is from Airbnb and we can see the reservation number, the last modified date, we see the API updated date, and we can see that the calendar is managed by the channel, and we can also unlink from the channel if we'd like. We also see the platform email, we also see the cancellation policy associated with this channel, and we see the channel info. Below all that, we see the sync actions, and here we see the booking was added 30 days ago. Then we have the email tab. Here you have the option to search for all emails sent or received for this booking, you also see all the emails that are scheduled to be sent out. For example, the payment reminders and the security deposit reminders. You can click skip or send now, and you'll see any event-based triggers or time-based triggers here. You can also click the add scheduled email button to schedule an email to go out. There's also a compose new email, which will allow you to open a blank email and send whatever you'd like to the guest. You also have your new booking notification email, you have your new booking third party alerts email, and your new booking guest notifications email. If we click expenses, we'll see any expenses that are related to this booking. You can also click record expense and you can print this out if you'd like. There's also a filter button where you can sort out the expenses. The last tab is the PM tab. If this booking was managed by a property manager, you can come in here and change the settings for that. You can click the change button and here you'll see you can check yes, this booking is managed and generates commission. You can also make adjustments for owner, commission, taxes, damage protection, and direct remittance. There's also options for PM lock and update charges. Now that we've gone through all the booking tabs, there's also a few in the upper right. Here you have the cancel booking option. You can move the booking. You can also email this guest from here. You can view the conversations you've had, and you can view the email history. And above all that is the booking number for your records. It's important to note, other tabs like QuickBooks will show up if you have those options turned on as well. That is everything you need to know for understanding a booking and all its parts.